Okay, so hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name's Gaul, I'm uh, one of the co-founders and CEO of Codementum. I'm also an ex-computer science teacher. Um, so I have been teaching uh, for over five years before and um, before Codementum. Um, so yeah, so today we're going to be covering um, one of the most queried um, topics, which is how to transition students successfully from block-based coding to text-based. Um, in this webinar, I will be covering how, um, how and when you can start, um, why text-based coding, um, our own Codementum Studio, the transition to text-based coding, um, the programming languages that we can start with and some of the pro problems and solutions that you could encounter and some scientific research results as well as our own statistics and at the end I'll be um, giving some recommendations. So given how common technology is, knowing the basics of coding is an essential skill now as we all know for students moving into higher education and those that are looking for a career start. So teachers have identified um, this important skill and children are now learning to code at an earlier age however with the wide variety of options available for teachers um, it's important to make an informed decision that will prepare your students for success so block-based coding as you all know emerged as a tool to offer students an introduction to the world of coding um, it allows them to explore um, code in a friendly environment kids learn the logic um, of the algorithms by dragging and dropping these items um, instead of um, coding with text. Um, it's a great starting point for learning about algorithms for the younger kids, while um, educators could instantly start introducing digital skills um, to their classrooms with blocks, they also saw the limitations of block coding. So in this webinar I'm going to explain how to successfully transition um, to text-based programming languages that are widely used in the business world such as Python and JavaScript um, for those of you that want to go beyond the blocks. It's possible to teach young children um, the syntax of text-based programming languages, but you do need to be patient and adaptable because children's psychomotor skills are still not fully developed. And it also means that students are unfamiliar with the keyboard um, and they could be um, slow at typing and so on. So children can become quite proficient with text-based programming languages, but those passionate about coding will eventually want to go beyond block-based. Um, so at this point, it's extremely helpful to know how to command a machine using text-based programming languages. There's no limit really in text-based coding. It provides an environment where students can develop their skills in an unlimited way. Block coding does hinder further development. Um, it's much more difficult for students to grasp the actual coding concepts such as syntax um, with block coding. Uh, with text-based coding, students have a complete learning experience that instills important coding concepts they will remember and develop. Um, and also they will be able to basically avoid problems such as syntax overload later on when they're able to um, learn about the syntax rules and regulations when doing text-based. So an important aspect of learning something new is making mistakes, identifying what went wrong and then fixing those mistakes. In block-based coding, um, it's not so common to make mistakes to learn from. Uh, so to learn from them, students would um, work within boundaries that are predetermined with blocks and then they can't go beyond these boundaries. But text-based coding presents many real-world challenges that helps students truly learn how to solve problems. Text-based coding allows um, students to grow by making mistakes. So students get given the freedom to customize themselves and expand beyond drag and drop actions. Uh, sorry, I've got some people that need to join. So for those of you that just joined, um, Welcome. Uh, we're just covering basically um, how uh, why text-based coding is much more beneficial than block-based at the moment. So, um, as we all know, algorithms are the basis of learning programming. Children can quickly um, improve their ability to build algorithms with block-based. Um, coding. Once children become familiar with the basics and the syntax of programming with block-based coding, they can move on to text programming. Um, I just want to mention there was a recent um, MIT study where they found that learning a new language is much more uh, beneficial 
um, much more beneficial for kids at the age of 10. Um, and coding is like learning a new language. So um, it is recommended to start at an early age um, when you're moving on to text-based coding. So what I want to do is show you guys our studio briefly. So with Codementum Studio, we provide a smooth transition from block-based coding to text-based coding. We have synchronization between blocks and text. And teachers have the flexibility of um, basically allowing students to use one or the other. Um, students can easily see the connection between the two. So all the content of Python and JavaScript programming languages are explained by um, gamification of the studio. Python has a very simple syntax, similar to English. So it's an ideal choice for a start. And with synchronized code and block mode, students can instantly switch between these um, two options. So the first two topics that we have is the basics and repeat loops. We direct people to um, use only numbers on the keyboard. And the third topic is variables where you're slowly starting to use the keyboard. Approximately 50% of the students continue with text-based coding from this subject. That's what we have found. Um, and of course, the situation does vary according to the level of knowledge of the students and our teachers basically can watch the students live and encourage them to only do text-based coding by turning off the block mode function from any topic they see fit. All the challenges can be solved with both blocks and um, Python and JavaScript text. The student can set up the algorithm by using blocks for any subject at any time. The teacher can manage, manage this process by turning the class-based um, block mode on and off. Um, what we recommend is the first three scenes of each subject are um, solved and progressed in the presence of the teacher. So the first scene of each subject is provided with a solution. And then the second scene will be a wrong solution that the students need to find um, the mistake. And then finally, we want the third scene to be solved in the presence of the teacher. So there are already solutions for the third scene in our lecture documents. What we have observed is that 30% of the students who receive coding training with Codementum Studio at school, they continue at home between 7 and 9 p.m. in the evening. So that's briefly about the studio. Um, I'm going to talk about some statistics. So studies show that block coding is a great and fun way to start coding. But it is um, insufficient for real coding education. And there are opinions about new research studies for the transition to text-based coding. As you can see in these um, tables provided here, the performance of hybrid is much better compared to block when it comes to ease of learning, code modification, and um, basically having a syntax error-free code. Um, and when kids want to transition from block to text, hybrid applications do provide a better um, solution. So our own statistics based off of 40,000, approximately 40,000 um, users shows that it's um, the kids who are in third grade and above um, find it much more easier to transition from block to text. Um, and also the studies that MIT have done and all the other research studies that we have um, covered before does show that around the age of nine and 10, it's the best time to um, introduce text-based coding. Um, and as, the, as they grow older over the year, anyway, they start to use less and less blocks, but hybrid applications do provide a um, very good um, smooth transition for these kids. So in conclusion, um, I want to say that there's no limitation in text-based coding, like in block-based. Students who want to improve their coding skills um, and possibly even choose a relevant career path will need to use text-based. So while block-based is a great way for introducing kids to the world of coding and getting them to understand um, algorithms and how to build algorithms, it's um, a limitation. Um, so it hinders the further development as a program that beyond a certain point. Um, so because it doesn't uh, provide the more dynamic and expressive capabilities provided by text-based coding, um, 
we would prefer to teach real coding lang um, languages and coding skills as opposed to drag and drop programs. So students can develop a wide range of skills, including basic computational and critical thinking skills that are actually vital for any fundamental subject or any core subject, even if they don't want to, for example, pursue coding later on, it's still an important skill to have. Um, using text-based coding can seem like a difficult task, especially for teachers with insufficient programming knowledge. However, the reward of seeing students learn real world coding skills and build on a knowledge base they can apply to any career in the future is worth the challenge. And with Codementum, even if you don't have the desired level of programming um, knowledge as a teacher, you can easily teach your students uh, real programming language by following the documents that we've provided and the instructions we've provided. And you can also do the challenges yourself. So you can be a few weeks ahead of your classes um, by doing the challenges, you're also learning the actual um, programming language and you can teach your students with ease. Um, the problems that you could encounter when you move on to um, text space is that with visual coding, you don't find any error messages like syntax errors. So um, when you're doing text space, you have to memorize these uh, syntax and you have to write error free codes, right? So we um, have the concept of compilation and execution in text-based coding. Um, we can't compile our code if there's any syntax errors, but these small errors can still guide students and enhance their learning experience. So making mistakes essentially is great. Practice makes perfect. Um, and also they might find the whole indentation and spacing um, with Python, for example, um, quite difficult. But as they keep practicing and doing more challenges and tasks, they will get used to it. Um, and also another thing that could be quite difficult is the readability aspect, um, because if you don't have um, a program that's readable, um, it will directly affect you when you're debugging and finding errors in your code. So I suggest um, to create coding classes that allow students to progress at their own pace and have two students work together, if possible, with a computer during the um, coding training in the classroom. Um, if you can, make sure that one of the students has better coding knowledge than the other, um, then that would also be a benefit because the research studies um, have observed that pair coding education provides a faster learning experience, close to 50%. Um, and since you guys, as teachers, know your students the best, make the transition to text-based coding at the most appropriate time, you feel. Even if they find it hard at first, you'll see how creative they can actually be when they start coding. And you definitely have to be patient. Just as not like all subjects like maths, for example, can't be completed in one year, coding education will not be completed in one year. So you need to prevent students from getting bored by spreading the topics over time show um, the class progress chart to your students maybe by displaying it on the screen every week this can motivate them um, strengthen the competition among the students if that's something you want um, you can do activities that will increase students keyboard skills in advance before moving on to text based coding um, and coding it's the process of correcting mistakes and managing your students mistakes um, and switching to text-based coding may cause a backlash in students. So you really need to switch smoothly with hybrid applications. Um, so kids need to learn in a fun and engaging way. The coding platforms need to introduce kids to block-based coding and then eventually help them advance to text-based coding. It's important that students um, learn their syntax rules so that issues like syntax overload are not faced later on. Um, and a starting point, a good starting point would be to learn with Python, help them build transferable skills that will easily allow them to learn other languages. So Python is actually a good starting point. Um, and to finish off, even if students don't choose a career path in technology, having these foundational skills that they are learning with text-based coding can be applied to any job they pursue. So um, essentially telling the kids this is also beneficial. Um, because kids always ask, why do we need this? What are we going to do with this in the future, for example? So learning real coding skills um, can develop a broad range of skills that include computational thinking, critical thinking skills that are actually vital to learning any core subject and in the future. Um, 
So that's everything from me. Thank you for listening. And let me just unmute.